What's up? Hey. What's welcome. up, YouTube? <laughs> welcome. Well, not only YouTube. Uh, welcome. Yeah, was it all YouTube viewers and audio listeners? Yeah, all viewing platforms. What's up? It's your boy. It's been a while. Yep. It's this, been a hot minute. Yep. This is the uh, Cruel World podcast, and yep. it's been about a year since the last yeah, time. Yeah, actually. Um, in that year, I have given birth, and that is the reason why we were Hell gone. Yeah. And now we are back. Yes. The end. Back in action. <laughs> baby sleeping upstairs. Yep, we got the baby sleeping upstairs. Living its best life. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh yeah. Um so if you have been waiting for a next podcast, um, we're really sorry to keep you waiting. But now we are here and hopefully we did not disappoint because today we are reacting to Gary V. Now Good old how Truck. do you feel about Gary V, right? Love him. I look up to him every day. Every day I wake up, I'm like, damn, Gary V, what do you got? What 10 TikToks do you have for me today? Is Gary V daddy? Yeah, he's big daddy V. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Gary V is uh, an interesting topic on um, this podcast and my channel. If you're new and this is the first video that you've seen from both of us, um, my name is Madison. This is my husband, Riley. And uh, I have another YouTube channel on here called Cruel World Happy Mind. And um, for a while, I've been speaking out about how Gary V. I, I'm just I'm not a Gary V. fan. I can understand the appeal. It's okay to hate. Yeah, if he's hate the if, hustle, <laughs> hate the hustle instead of respect the hustle. Um, you know, if he's if Gary V's inspired you and has helped you do great things in life, that's amazing and awesome. But I think it's kind of dangerous how he's looked up to as like this figurehead who's this ultimate genius and you should hang on his every word and listen to his wise words because everything gary v says is law you know yeah because i don't think what he says is really that special unique or helpful to a lot of people it, he's not actually giving you the blueprints for success and um i think that he actually leads people down a dangerous path of burnout and hustle culture um and finally the best thing that has happened in this year is that finally more and more people have um, kind of realized that Gary V is um, a little ridiculous in some of his yeah. approach. Some yeah, of his approach shout out. is, you know, not um, not the greatest. And other people have kind of realized that. And uh, there's been a lot of awesome content creators who've made videos on it. And so I finally feel welcomed. I got a lot of hate um, back in the Initially, day for talking yeah. about Gary V. And so, like, yeah. Like Mew and Cat, Casey. Yeah. Stuff like that, making videos on it. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of great uh, commentary channels who've made videos on Gary V. We'll link all of them down below so you can check them all out. And uh, yeah. And so I feel I feel like welcomed. I feel understood. And that um, makes my heart happy. Let's get into it. All right. So we're going to kick this off by reacting to some of Gary V's funniest moments. Because I think before we can really explain who Gary V is... It's important that we just show you who Gary Vee is. My family. Good. Who in your family? Pick one. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're very politically correct. <laughs> cool. Every day, make in the in like literally once a day, genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face. I'm being dead wow. serious with you. Every single day. I I've seen this video before, but. Just, just still watching it again. I'm just like, wow. That, he, he really said that to someone. Yep. What if she did have someone that got shot in the face? That is true. I mean, I just also like people have you know their own kind of mental health things going on. Like to say to tell someone to think that could actually really mess just a with a random them. person. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, um, bro. So that's Gary Vee. Yep. I almost. I said this today earlier. I probably once a week to four times a week sit there truly in the shower on a flight when I wake up. Some people meditate, right? Some people work out. Wait, so he's on a he's in the shower on sitting there on a plane? <laughs> Weird flex, bro. I, like he's like some people meditate. I some don't Some people meditate on their own private jet to the Bahamas. Instead of as some people meditate, I don't believe in that. Instead I believe in envisioning that my entire family dies. <laughs> in a <laughs> That's tragic what plane crash. That's relaxes me. Because like meditation supposed to relax you and like help you be more aware and alert. It's like instead it's like 
I'm just gonna oh not God. meditate. Nah, I'm just gonna imagine that my whole family dies just tragically. Dead. Just dead. Yep. Yep. Right to in my own private Whatever plane. anxieties or thoughts they have, I actually sit and truly try to convince myself that I have lost one of the five most important people in my life, and that is the biggest thing I do that leads to the biggest happiness I have. Like, how? The biggest thing I do <laughs> that leads to the biggest happiness I have. Some of the things, like, sentences. I wake up every day happy that my parents figuratively are dead. <laughs> I mean, also, like, Every day, until that... I get a phone call from my mom once a day. So here's the thing. So as you can tell, if you didn't know who Gary Vee was before clicking on this video, Gary Vee is a motivational speaker. And this is supposed to help motivate you. This is supposed to help you. He's helping you. Um, I mean, I feel pretty But here's the thing. Like, meditation, there are studies about how beneficial it is. Are there studies on Gary Vee's method, his self-invented method of envisioning that your family got shot every day? Yeah. Are there studies on that? Or is he just telling people to do something just that could actually it, be super bad for them you just spitball on it it just is like do you know this seems like a really good topic to talk about today i'm going i'm going to like destroy someone's someone's mental process in my conference yep. that i'm getting paid a couple but hundred he grand says for. it with like such confidence and like the thing that you'll end up <laughs> finding out about gary v is he makes himself out to be this genius like genius tech guy genius social media guy and so he makes himself out to be this person of authority. Like, I'm a genius. You should listen to me. He, I know what's right. You should listen to me. And this is his, the advice that he's giving people. He, he reminds me of Michael Scott. You never give Michael Scott the mic or let him say anything because he says stuff like this. Yeah, that's true. Guys, but every time somebody comes up to me and says, well, how's Twitter going to make money or Facebook? I vomit directly in my mouth. <laughs> then I swallow it. Billions of eyeballs you can monetize. Just put in work. I vomit and... my mouth and swallow it because that's the nutrition I need to go on with my everyday life of hustling, <laughs> of making money. Don't eat. Save time. Eat. So open your own mouth and swallow it. Oh, no. I did not think that was the turn that this podcast was going to take. I mean, that just goes to show when he talks about how the most valuable commodity is attention, is eyes on you, which is something that he says often. It just goes to show that that's what he's doing himself. Mm -hmm. He's creating this brand, trying to get the attention on him by saying all these outrageous, shocking, motivational stuff, making you believe he has your best interest yeah. in mind. He Meanwhile, he's monetizing me. that on the back end. Yeah. You know, everything. It's, everything. Yeah. everything. Which know? we'll get to in a bit. Work and enjoy that. Enjoy eating shit and dirt and bleeding and the grind i want you to he's got he's got like a weird thing going on with like eating <laughs> eating crap throwing up and eating it you know eating other people's fecal matter like he's got he's got a thing going on with that i want you to eat what is eat your own crap see once again it's like he just he says these random things they have no meaning but they're just shocking and so like damn bro you're right <laughs> yeah damn i need i do <laughs> one sec <laughs> <laughs> you just hear like some dude grunting over the other phone like wait what are you doing i'm eating my own shit gary you told me to you told me to eat it i'm just imagining all these like frat dudes like hustle bros that are just like it's part of the Whoa. hazing process <laughs> this dude's on to something yeah i never considered uh so i'm very excited about that um we are going to do some serious damage which is really my definition of eating what are you shit. Talking to? Is something I do every day. Every day. <laughs> I'm still in the same. Just I thought boys. we were gonna get away from that. And by the way, all the videos that we're re reacting to will be linked down below as well. So oh, you'll yeah. be able to so credit you can them. react to them as well. Yeah. Fucking process. 24 months of eating shit <laughs> and looking yourself <laughs> and shit on yourself. Aren't you fucking tired? Of eating I'm shit. uh I'm pretty passionate about um, really focusing on- Eating shit. Okay. On eating shit. <laughs> eating shit. Damn. <laughs> Gary, why? <laughs> Mr. V, I looked up to you, man. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm starting to have, uh, have my doubts. I think I think we all need to help Gary V stray away from Yeah, hashtag this don't eat your own. Like, yeah, there's a lot of bad health benefits what to is eating also, your own. Who is this helping? Mm -hmm. People that- don't eat shit. True. Yeah. I'm pretty convinced shit. now. I might just do and it. taking it. Shit changes. 
because it feels a lot better to shit on somebody else than <laughs> shit on myself every day. I want See, I know what you mean by that, dude, but your car, the way that you say it. Fuck you. Think about your fucking grandparents. They didn't have no internet. I just eat shit constantly. You have shit around your house. Out of that in the end. So let's, 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 let, 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 let's start right there. There's let, something let, I do, let, let, let. maybe not every day, but comes from- Gary Vee like, feels like that person where he like asks you a question, but the entire time he's not actually listening to you at all. That's why. I And do. then he's just waiting for like himself to talk and tell you about how right he is. And it has nothing to do with anything you've yeah. said at all. Discard everything that you just told me. This is what I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Eat shit. Exa yeah, yeah, exactly. Are we too, are we long enough in the- in the video to do curse now? Yeah, we're good. If you ask me why I'm me, it's because every day, every other day, no shorter than minimum once every four days, I will role play in my mind the tragic- <laughs> What is he saying? Every day, He's going every on other to... day, no minimum than once every four days. One to four days, one to four business days. This reminds me of I like... hustle five days a week. Reminds me of like if you're talking to like a grandparent or something and they're trying to recall an they're old just memory. Going, Except for uh, back he's in just... September of forty five. It just but it's it's him like talking. Yeah. Really? Really. Okay, and what do you do with that information? What I do with that information is Oh wow, so he was I saying this for a while. Yeah, this has been his thing. To keep everything this thing has been respect. dead family members, eating dukes, you know. What do you do with that information? Literally, what do you do with that? Oh, go to a figurative funeral for my figurative death. <laughs> <laughs> Should like, I figuratively mourn for a period of figuratively <laughs> four to six months? Yeah, then I do it again. <laughs> so he says he uses it as the framework. Why are you keeping in perspective? Oh, that that anyone could die at any given. Here's the thing. At, any given at the same time, Gary V talks about not letting in negativity. It's not negativity. It's motivation medicine. Like what? Medicine. He says to not let in negativity. Yet he's like, picture your whole family dying to help you gain perspective in life. It's like that's pretty no, freaking I won't. negative, bro. Um, on top of that, and like um, eating eating shit's pretty negative too. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing in life. Anything bad can happen to you at any moment. Move forward with that information and do what, what you will with it. But like... No, it's, he, he definitely does it for the shock factor. Yeah. He he wants to throw people off by by saying like obscure things. That's true. And you have to wonder, it's like if, if, he's, if he's not actually wanting to genuinely motivate people and he's just throwing stuff out to shock them, then he's spreading dangerous messages for the purpose once. of his own benefit. Because, like, at the end of the day, who's this benefiting? Sharing this information is damaging It's benefiting us kids. because we're talking about it. I guess. But, like, sharing this information is going to hurt people oh, who time. are actually listening to him. But it's only going to benefit him because he gets to promote himself off of that. You know? Yeah. 25. And I'm like, man, I've really been here, like... Bro, I'd rip both my legs off and arms to be 25 <laughs> on some real shit. I'd give up everything I have to be 25 just to play again. <laughs> 25 is a baby. That's how I feel about going back to 16 sometimes, man. Like, I hate it, but fuck, growing up sucks sometimes. Yeah, but it's also amazing if you change your relationship with it. If you really know you're going to live for one more time, it. He's a it. it slows down. Everybody's got pressure. Thinking they got to do something by 25. Got to do shit. <laughs> First time I think about getting to, like, 25, and I'm like, Wait, 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 wait play it again. I got to hear it one more time. The, <laughs> this is the laziest bro, fuck, I'd rip bro. both my legs off and arms to be 25. <laughs> on some real <laughs> shit. I'd give up. Literally want to die instead of fail. Die. Death over. I do not know how to live in life. I do not. That if you die, shows... you fail, though. Well, that just shows how hypocritical he's like. I would rip my legs off to be twenty-five, take it slow, relax, and then he's like, I would die instead of fail. Like <laughs> I would die. Dying is worse than failure. Like what? That's a little harsh, man. Like you go from one to the other. Well, it's like not only that. Once again, you're saying that this is affecting people. Yeah. You know, we're like, I'm not saying that anyone's like harmed themselves because of Gary Vee, but like if I was like some big Gary V follower and listener and like Gary V says, Oh, it's better off dying than failing, you know? I'm gonna yeah. be fucking stressed all the time trying not to fail. Yeah, totally. Exactly. It, it, and I think a lot of people really do take what he says to heart because he has branded himself as like yeah. such a like like the guru, yeah. the guy. He knows what's up. Oh, he's, he's going to these conferences. This. He's done that. He's predicted this thing. 
big time. Yeah. You know how to live in life, live in life with an L in business on my doing? resume. You should take defeat personally, period. Imagine not doing anything. Do you see that like little sequence that you did? Like L in business in resume. It feels like he choreographed that. Yeah, he did. He was, it looked like, like, like a little, it out. like a yeah. little hip hop. He was move. proud of himself after he's like. I'm yeah. proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's more coordinated than me. Yeah, I can't dance. But, I got no um, rhythm. Yeah, I mean, like, what the hell? What the hell? Literally, every single person ever has failed. Every single person, except Gary Vee. Like a. Like, this whole idea of success, in my opinion, is just, like, a complete illusion. Success is what you make of it. It's, yeah. you know, living a ha – it could be living a happy, fulfilled life. It could be reaching a net worth value. It's, like, whatever you want it to be. be. Having success isn't the same to everyone. Visualizing your dead parents. Like, lately, my dream of success is living on a, you know – um modest house in vermont you know in the fall time i look out and i see colorful trees that's my that's my idea of success my idea of cool. success is blown up <laughs> like, I don't know. acting like i don't know nobody but you know it's like <laughs> it's like you know this whole idea but anyways so what is failure failure is nothing failure is a blimp it uh, anyways not to not to become gary v and get all ranty motivational uh, pretty, that's pretty motivating yeah i live like that yeah yeah Imagine that you fail every day. That's that what, yeah, there's a shock factor. Yourself. That's that's a shock factor <laughs> that I needed. From a massive public failure. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just like, like what? So just to have all this pressure, you're you're telling kids like, oh, don't you don't have any pressure. And yet you're also giving it to them by saying like failure is the worst thing you can do and and take defeat personally when it's like we everyone fails. And that that's literally mm -hmm. the definition of life. Failure. Failure is the definition of definition of life. Like you're just constantly failing and learning, I feel mm -hmm. like, and then you die. That's my outlook. Better than failing. I guess. Yeah. Just go straight to death. Yep. Skip the fail part. Listen, I'm super thrilled to be here. I I really appreciate it. Go. I was selfish. That's for sure. I was born in Belarus in the former Soviet Union. But in the Soviet Union, between 1919 and 1959, somewhere between 30 and 50 million people were killed in internal oppression alone. I just don't think anybody does it better. What is better? We can do this. Let's rip their necks, you know, like out of their body. <laughs> and so that's only one version of it. There's a difference between imperfect and <laughs> what? consciously Bro? murderous. Very honestly, I don't give a fuck. Really, I really don't. This is really such don't. a great duo, Jordan Peterson yeah. and Gary Vee. I actually, they should start a podcast That's together. That would be amazing. highly entertaining. I think people oh, yeah. look at this in a cynical way. Cynical like, way? Nobody, like nobody gives a fuck that you were the captain of your lacrosse team. The fuck does that have to do with anything? So my advice for the kids, since you position it that way, is shut your fucking mouth. I want to remind them. That's kind of that's kind of disheartening though, because like, yeah, okay, like. Like in the past, if you were like the captain of a lacrosse team or like any sports team and stuff, it wasn't, it was not that important, but it does establish like leadership skills and like able yeah. to manage things. And like it's a good life lesson. You yeah. know, it, it matters to that individual. Yeah. And if it matters to and you, and sometimes it it's a peak, you. it's a peak of most people's lives. Well, it's not like, most people's. <laughs> you know, that, that joke again, of like, like, oh, you what you make of school. it. If it matters to you, it matters to you. Do it, enjoy it, be proud of it. Like, who cares whatever what whether or not people don't give a fuck about it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. Gary Vee will say, like, don't pay attention to the haters. And then he'd say, like, yeah, no one just cares hates. about your accomplishments. Yeah. yeah. Screw your Dang. accomplishments. Think about your dead parents. Kids, I didn't say a fucking word to the world for the first fucking 10 years of my life. You gotta do it first. Put my head down. I built a liquor store. Then I came out and said, I built this business. That's a lot more fun. What's your secret? See, like... That's the thing. I had a family member tell me this is, and this is, I think, also a personal reason why I get really worried for people when they listen too much to Gary Vee. Um, when I was 19 years old, I had a family member tell me, like, if you just put your head down and did nothing but work for five years, then you'll be then you'll be successful. All you have to do is put your head down and work for just five years. Just five and years, and then you'll you'll take off. You'll do well in life. And I don't think that's the case. I, I, But at that time, I was so, so inspired by what this family member said. I went home and I decided I wanted to start an app business. And I got a developer. I worked with a co-founder. 
Um, and we just spent hours and hours pouring all of our time into this app only for it to massively fail. Because guess what? Failure is inevitable. Sometimes it happens no matter how much time you put into something. There's so many other elements. There's market viability. There's um, demand, consumer demand. There's, you know, strategy. And there's just so many elements of, you know, become having a business that takes yeah. off, that gets off the ground that like you just, you can't just put your head down and work. And that's mm -hmm. not a valuable message to tell anyone because it's just, it's irresponsibly undersharing what it I, takes. I, it feels like it would be a lot better if you just like went into it saying that like, yeah, failing sucks, but like it's the, um, it's what built success. But if you're constantly failing at something, you should probably try and do something else. Yeah. If he said it in his own Gary Vee-ism. Yeah, no, exactly. Totally. Yeah. When you go into a negotiation. First of all, if you pay the price that something listed for at a garage sale, you're confused. My tactic is to always offer a lot less. That's also a big comment, right? Like, this fucking dick face. They asked the dollar, he offered 50 cents. You fucking. I'm like, no, no, no. This show is for people that have $39 to their name. And we're going to talking them. about his this garage sale stuff. Episode of Trash Talk mm -hmm. $39 to 14000 a year from now. And if you've got 39 fucking dollars and somebody wants a dollar for something that you found on eBay is worth 29, you better fucking pay a quarter. Kind of like I think about my first offer the way I think about catching a cold boxer in round one. In fighting, you might catch somebody cold. They didn't get warmed up. They're like not in it yet. And you might be able to get them out of there in round one. And that's what I'm trying to do. What is I he saying? First price. So if they got to listen for 15, I'm like, hey, I even know he's trying like. Free? Whereas most people are like, oh, okay. You left no room. You come in with three with the insult to the fucking punch to the face. You might end up getting that thing for five. Worst case scenario, paying eight. Point political, I'm just like pretty sure Gary V just anybody. like you walk into his house and like with his whole garage sale splurge. He probably just has a bunch of stuff in his Oh my in gosh, you're right. Garage. Oh my gosh, what if Gary V's like a total hoarder? You he just, just open up his garage is like <laughs> Dinosaurs, just hot like wheels. tons of like knickknacks, like yeah. just like random people's garage this items. Is like, worth, like, this, this, is, this is actually worth it, Lomi. Lomi, <laughs> I bought all this stuff at twenty thousand. No, <laughs> I can sell it for twenty one thousand easily. <laughs> easily, cool dude. Yep. That thinks the president of the United States, whether it's Barack or Donald or Bernie or Hillary, is gonna help them, they're a fucking loser. Straight up. And that's what's sad too is his audience thinks that he's gonna help them. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the messed up part. He's like basically calling them losers, like to their face as well. So you are. That means you need somebody. <laughs> like, so like whether your whether your president is for minorities and females or your president is you know for the twenty six year old white male that's got no skills. Here's the punchline. The You're pretty much everyone in my audience right now. What is the 54 year old gonna do? Adjust or lose. Think about like, why was I an F student? Because I promise you, if there was a business school for K through 12, right? Here's my thing, right? If you would have taught me why New Coke failed in 1984 in fifth grade, I would have got an A. Instead, you wanted to teach me how many fucking rings were around Saturn. I'm getting fuck about that, right? Yeah, screw school. <laughs> Like, okay, but some people do. I care about how many rings are around Saturn. I how many are? Cool. I don't know. Okay. I'm there you go. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Next question. Maybe, like, <laughs> people think people care no, about gets, different things. Yeah, it feels like school, even though it's like, in my opinion, I don't like school. Never did. It still gets the mind ready for more things to come, like college, if people want to go down that route. I mean, I definitely think that our you know our parents generation mm -hmm. school was extremely valuable in determining your stability because i think you know people right. say success in life but i think a lot of people are really just searching for stability um you know feeling you know secure in their financial future which also in you know in turn relates to their future with um you know retirement and yeah. being able to well, be, not be, live comfortably right, not starve right. you know and and so um you know college was essential for that and i think you know gen z it, it's and millennials it's becoming less and less essential and right so i think it's important it feels to, like college like yeah for for a lot of things but it feels like college is still pretty important for you know people that want to live jobs. that experience yeah specific jobs doctors biologists stuff that i actually need to know programs and 
yeah and stuff for him, but i mean i just think it's it's not wrong either way like there right, is right. no wrong answer there's it's, definitely a lot of flaws in the education system right but it's a lot easier now to be more successful with more non-traditional jobs yeah than it was back during like old folks eras i'll send you a picture you hearing all this oh jesus hello i'm gonna i just sent you the pictures 60 60 right ma'am ma'am 60 some old lady that could care less about <laughs> old lady in a garage you want sale. i love talking to myself at a garage sale oh that's that's genius yeah. trash talk episode four I'm trying to make the score that really matters you're so cool bro you're so <laughs> edgy <laughs> meanwhile it's just like all these old dudes that don't care at all about the fact that he's yeah. there like like they're selling the like, stuff for a reason they could, they could give a damn if it's worth like a million dollars he's trying to look like a cool player type like like so busy like on his phone like like he's gonna be able to negotiate that way meanwhile there's just like three or four random locals hey like, can i buy these pairs of socks around. for like 50 cents <laughs> Like no one cares, dude. I don't got money, but I got have I have a bag of chips. If you want to trade, you consider doing forty. I'll take them. I don't know. I was already discounting it a lot. I wanted three dollars a piece, so I gave you less than two dollars a piece. I know. <laughs> I got the green light for forty. <laughs> Was he? Is he? Oh, yeah. he's negotiating down. Yeah. You don't know that. You go 44. Unless you're a family member of mine, in which I'm picturing you getting shot. Yeah, you are technically, in my own head, dead. <laughs> you're 20, which means you have 80 years to live. 80, right? Number two, you're in America. See, you just can't go like, around saying you, that. Your future, either. you're listening to the wrong voices. You're looking, you're looking at what's in front of you right now. College doesn't mean shit. College doesn't mean shit. So I don't give a fuck what if you actually out of college. Is. I think it's good that you dropped out of college. You need to... Listen to you, more of my contact. Read more Read more of my books. You know? And you'll break out of that thinking that your life is shit. Bullshit. He, yeah. he, says, he says shit a lot. I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously, if you're in a really dark place mentally, sometimes having motivation helps you get out of that. Yeah, totally. You know, um, I know you were saying that you were in a dark place once and you were listening to motivational not, content. Not necessarily like dark, but like I was like in the slumps and stuff um, just overseas because I'm in the army. It happens sometimes. But I was like, damn, I don't really like feel like doing anything or going to work at all and stuff. So I started watching like like motivational videos of Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff. And <laughs> then, yeah, and got, it got happy again. Then yeah. like when I was happy, I went back onto that and I was just like, what was he even trying to say? You know, I think it was. I think it's the dramatic music that they put into those videos that yeah. really gets people going. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you know? if if you need motivation be, in your life and it helps you, that's great. You know, yeah. has to be copyright free, though. I think that those those songs your are a lot better. Shit? Than, your yeah. life is shit. That. Keep listening to more of my content. You need fucking positivity coming through your ears. When fucking all that negativity is coming in your head, put your fucking headphones in and listen to positivity what? and go get a job and start saving money. Go get a job and start saving money. Doesn't he say not to get a job and like like yeah. hustle on stocks and investments? I mean, it, it just his that's the problem with Gary Vee. Screw B. your his... day job. Stop making those freaking sandwiches and start making freaking money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, Invest in my that NFTs. Kind of guy? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at this point in the video, I think it would be a good time to now that we've listened to enough Gary Vee quotes, um, you know, since we're learning from the master himself. Um, let's try and come up with some of our own Gary Vee quotes. Do you think? Yeah. All right. You go first. I can't think of any. Hmm. Okay. It usually starts with imagine. Imagine this. Imagine you wear a hat every day when you're not supposed to wear a hat. Live like that. Imagine you're walking on the subway does anyone walk on a subway? I don't you walk know. on the subway. Imagine, Imagine you're walking, walking on, on a subway, subway and a man approaches you and he slaps you. Live like that. Live like that. Just putting things into perspective. 
imagine you're in a room and there's only one Lego on the floor and you happen to step on that one Lego. That puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Just puts it? it in perspective, you know? Imagine you're trying. He does that ice squint thing. He just like looks off mm-hmm. into the distance and mm-hmm. starts and starts spitting nothing but analogies. Imagine that you fail. It's better you just die. Just dead. Mm-hmm. Just like your parents. Mm-hmm. Figuratively. And just like, yep. <laughs> You know what he reminds you of? He reminds you of like a that really eager kid. Like, you know, like there's like a kid that just, just has like, all these ideas in him. And just like the second mm-hmm. you say, hey, Gary, how are you doing? Dead parents. Yeah. Just God. like so excited, like so eager. Like, I'm going to go do this. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I mean, I, I appreciate like the energy. I appreciate the energy. I feel like yeah. like he has an ability to do so much in one day. And I, could, I can only I do like do that. Yeah, I can only do like two things in a day. I That's about as much as I can do. Yeah. So, you know, I, good on him for that amount of energy. Can't relate. Being an entrepreneur, I prefer the pain. I, I love, love it when I don't climb. pack enough food. But and at the same time, I can't fail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love when something goes wrong. I love when there's a setback. But if there's a failure, <laughs> I want to die. What's your classification of a failure then, man? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, this dude makes no sense. He posts so much content. You just can't make sense of any of it. Look, like my man. Mm. Like, you should have gave him that money on GP if that was your man. You're damn right. And I'm glad the market punched me in my mouth i deserve it i'm driven by it i'm hungrier mm. got it is that you're why you di- grab everything I mean, you're 100 percent right look at this and show them i got goosebumps uh-huh, yeah it does i got Your goosebumps because you're a thousand percent I, I deserve my that l my man i deserve that l you know how like rocky lost to marinated Mr. with my dead parents mm-hmm. yeah man so that's gary v love you gary so now to learn more about gary v i think it's fair that we watch a little bit of content from him himself, yeah. his TikTok. Yeah, jump onto his talk. All right, let's see. So this is who he is from him himself. There's probably some of you that don't know who I am. I'm an entrepreneur born in Belarus, came to the U.S., grew up very entrepreneurial, lemonade stands, baseball cards, always making a buck, making a couple thousand dollars a weekend when I was a kid. Eventually joined my dad's liquor store business, took it from a three to a $60 million e-commerce business, became an early investor in Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Uber, Snapchat, Pinterest, went on to build a very large global agency called... See, this is what I have to say. So, like, Get on him. right now, Gary Vee is trying to, like, establish authority. You know, like, this is this is who I am. This is, like, my success and why you should listen to me. But, like, the thing about investing is, like, especially in, like, the Silicon Valley, like, tech world, um, a lot of these investors are, like, buddies and they talk to each other about what they're investing in. Right. So, it's, like, did you if, invest in it because you're just, like, this social media genius guy? No, you're just hanging around with the right people, which, like, still good on you. But yeah, if, like, if you have one person tweeting about some cryptocurrency or, like, stock and everyone buys that Are you stock, a genius because you bought that? No, no. You, you're a genius because you just bought into the hype. Yeah. Yeah, and also in a, in a he, way, if if it does yeah, go right, totally. I mean, and also he's talked so much about um, all these investments that he's made, but I haven't. I mean, he posts so much content, so it's hard to see. Maybe yeah, I just like, missed we're it. We're talking like multiple times a day. Yeah, There's like, like on some all Gary different clip. social media platforms. Like poor kid, poor fucking person behind the camera just recording all day long yeah there's definitely an intern that just follows him around 24 7 filming random interactions not getting paid with real money though yeah nfts yeah we'll (laughs) we'll get into that but yeah but i like um what was i saying but he never like i haven't found a clip of gary actually talking about how much equity he has in these companies how much he invested what's his stake like it he could have just not even have anything in it it reminds me of like the fire festival guy who told all these investors that he was an early investor in Facebook and had all these shares when in reality he only had the equivalent of like a thousand dollars in Facebook shares. Which, yeah, he was an early investor, but <laughs> not that much though. Yeah. yeah. So put that media, uh, five time New York Times best selling author and arguably the greatest New York Times speaker best selling author. Time. Just have to throw that in there. Yeah. And here's the problem with Gary V. Gary V talks 
a lot as if he's just here for you. He's here to mm-hmm. help you. Other people want to sell you stuff. But I'm Gary going to get v, you started on your career. He's He cares about you. Yeah, he wants to help you. But then you look at like he's promoting a book. He has a media company, which kind of translates to him selling brands this ability to you know promote them. Um, so his platforms are basically you know, his success story that he can share with other brands and say, look what I did on social media to myself. I can do that to you. So no matter what, whether you're engaging with his content, whether you're buying his books, going to his conferences in a Joe Rogan podcast, he said that he makes 120,000 per conference that he does. It's like, you know, he's selling a brand. He's profiting off of you listening to what he says. And does he really care about what you do with the information he gives? Or is he just giving information endlessly. When I launched V Friends, here is the feelings I had. I, Gary Vaynerchuk, am petrified that that people are about to spend money on this. And if this is not ROI positive for them, this will be the thing that kills me inside. I am mentally prepared to give up Gary V the brand, speaking, my books, and VaynerMedia itself to make sure for the next really 45 years that I create an economy that provides value for the people that bet on me on May 12th. 99% yeah, of the other people on? that I'm watching very carefully and are like, keys. this is uh. a gold rush moment. I'm going to launch this and I'm going to make a lot of money and have no thoughts NFT of how they're going like to make scam, those NFTs man. Well, it, I like, mean, it feels like they put so much money into it and now they have to promote it, just like a pyramid scheme. It does feel, it definitely, I mean, I saw a Logan, funny enough, Scam, randomly, I don't know why I was, I think I, I was watching a Logan Paul podcast because Mr. Beast was on. I'm very fascinated with like his level of success on YouTube, but um, I was watching that podcast um, on the impulsive and they were both talking about how Gary V called them up and told them to invest in NFTs. Because he has too much money in it. So the reason yes. why Logan Paul is promoting NFTs is because Gary V recommended Ended it to him. Damn. Like, and but here's that, the other thing. That's just thing. like a bad. That's that may be a good sign, maybe a bad sign. Well, yeah, it's just it's bizarre. Like he he has all these connections to these social media people that he's telling to promote this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's obviously you know um, in hopes of them blowing it up, so he makes huge amounts of profit right. off of it. It, but it's just, it's, yeah, it feels very pyramid schemish, you know, where in the end, the people that are losing out are the followers who are looking up to these social media guys. They're buying these social media guys NFTs, which makes Gary V at the very top even more richer. And yeah. at the end of the day, the fans are the ones that are losing money because <clears throat> are they really buying anything valuable? It's hard to say. Time will tell. Right. But this clip also shows to me like just another example of he's like all these other nft guys are only in it because they think they're going to make an easy buck but i but really I'm care in it about for your you. own self because yeah. we're going to be using nfts for currency i'm here to help you and it's yeah. like same thing with he's like other get rich gr- other get rich gurus <laughs> blah, 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 are bad but i really care about you i'm just doing this to help you and it's like yeah. i'm not even so trying to get you rich i'm trying i'm trying to put put things in perspective for you it's like at the end of the day, like in, in a capitalist society, we're all, you know, kind of needing to make money to thrive, blah, blah, blah. Like he's not doing this just to help others endlessly or else he would be doing it a lot differently. He'd be giving you the step by steps yeah. of how to succeed, of how to actually do this instead of having you buy his NFTs, buy his books, attend his conferences. You know, it, to me, that doesn't eat ring the bell shit. of... Eat, yep. <laughs> that doesn't ring the bell of someone who just wants to help you. I like it. I like it. That's yeah. a good, that's a good, that's a good Gary V post. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just love the that he's equating empathy with alpha and i wish that all the alpha channels and social media profiles would start doing that because imagine if if alpha bros or alpha dudes or hey bro i care for you yeah like if they started seeing empathy as an alpha trait (laughs) that would be awesome they'd be like hey what's up what's back to my alpha channel on how to be an alpha male number one thing care for others check on the homies bro you know, and the, the trick to being number one is putting other people first, caring for them. Like, that call, would be awesome. call your mom. 
Call your mom. <laughs> Call your parents. See how they're doing. Care for others. Yeah. Yep. Love them. That that I mean that would be awesome. I mean I hope that he starts a trend on that. It just feels like he's like a like a chameleon in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, where like a couple years back it was just like hustle, hustle, hustle. Put your head down and do it, which he still kind of is. But now since we're transitioning to more of like a like an empathetic, caring for other people kind of kind of beat kind of culture flavor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's he's jumping into that, which that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's so funny. It's like have empathy, but also picture your parents dying. Um, you know, like he he has these he does these interviews with these kids who are super young, where he's basically shitting on them. <laughs> ha! Make them eat it. <laughs> and make yeah, no. Um, but he but where he like he kind of embarrasses them. He like publicly yeah. humiliates them, and that's like his brand and his thing. And a lot of them you are cool with it. You go up there to Gary Vee concert, you're going to get shit on. Yeah, or conference. Yeah, they like they know like you know he'll pick people from the audience. He'll do interviews with people. People will ask him questions, and then he'll make them feel bad about asking him a question. Right. And then he turns around. And he's like, empathy is the key. He's like, picture your parents dying, but also but care, care for, for others. It, it's just like he. It feels like he's saying nothing because he says so much, and it constantly contradicts himself. Right. Start with the most vulnerable video of your life. How about that? You will be stunned, especially on TikTok right now, where your first video can go viral. Especially on TikTok. So this Just is Ga- get out there and start doing it. So this is what Gary V. So and if you look at a lot of the, you know, people that ask Gary V. questions, a lot of them are in their late teens, early twenties. They're kids, and. He's telling them, I'm an expert in social media. I invest in all these social media platforms. I'm super successful in it. And in order for you to be su- ah! in order for you to be successful, you have to be vulnerable on social media. No. He's no. telling kids That's not okay. to post the most vulnerable video of themselves on social media. And the thing that makes me nervous about that You're gonna get destroyed. Is yeah, social media is really harsh. Depends. They're really like like People send hate comments. People right. are really mean and rude. Like I've they make, been there. I've they make posted videos, videos of that video, <laughs> making fun of you. You know. Yeah, I mean, like I've I've posted videos, believe it or not, in the past and and possibly in the future. And um, people no. can be really harsh. People can be very very harsh. And um, big time. Do you want to tell a kid to post the most vulnerable parts of themselves out for the entire world to see? I mean, you look at a person like Trisha Paytas, um, who I just did a video on, mm-hmm. and they're the complete opposite of vulnerable. You know, they, they kind of act like they're being vulnerable, but most of what they post is just an illusion. It's just a front and an act that they're putting on, and it's all about engagement. It's doing whatever engages people. Right. So I feel like he's giving kids wrong advice that will just kind of lead to them yeah. getting hate on the internet about the most vulnerable part of themselves and not only that like employers too and stuff yeah if you end up finding like a, a solid set job that that requires like a clean background and they see you like i don't know it's weird it's yeah weird. it's hard to say take your phone flip it and go naked to the world who are you what do you want what are you good at what are you bad at what are you good at just go naked. Just stop right there. I mean, just go naked. Yeah. I mean, that kind of vulnerability. I mean, I've heard a lot of people are. It's pretty successful. In a way. Doing well on OnlyFans through that kind of vulnerability. So you know, maybe that you is the video secret. On that too. Maybe yeah. that's what he was talking about this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Dramatically louder. Negativity is dramatically louder than positivity. If you analyze the world, social media mainstream media your nice. house see once again it's like what is this dude saying he's like negativity is bad but also envision your parents dying i i want to chop off my limbs i want to eat shit like I what but negativity is bad like like shut it out shut out negativity negativity is loud positivity tends to be quiet because it's got internal strength to deal with the negativity and it doesn't bother itself That's a good with the negativity. Fade. Because of that, we have a world that is louder about bad and quieter about good. When this became obvious to me, I felt like I had to get loud about the truth of the world. And here's the truth. The world is better today than it's ever been in the history of mankind. Yet, so few people believe it. Negativity For you, maybe. I yeah. mean, there's a lot more people in rougher situations and stuff, you know? Yeah, Especially I mean, it's, with, like, the pandemic and... Totally. It's easy for Gary to say that. Like, you know, he's a 
successful, rich dude. Like, of that course, the books. world is the and best it's ever been items. to you. I mean, yeah. You know, A, we don't, you know, it's that's subjective. Maybe the world was better in the past for someone out there. I don't know. But also, it's like the reason why people are speaking out about the bad in the world is to hopefully make it better so that the world can continue to be the best it's ever been. Yeah. You know, and not just for the super wealthy like Gary V. Yep. Posted this video of me drawing more V friends on Twitter. And this person replied with this. Oh, be friends is so uh, first NFT, I replied right? back yeah. with this. So these are the favorite things since I've been in this space. Yeah. Is people who spent their life being an artist talking about art is in the eye of the beholder. That art is subjective, saying my shit's ugly. Fascinated by the concept of thinking that you can build the biggest building by tearing other people's buildings what? down. The least artist thing I know is shitting on someone That's else's art. Do, I'll see you in the legacy books for Reed SF93. I want to support else. other artists, so I bought one of his like, NFTs. Call someone out. Like, call someone out by username. I mean, I feel like that was a pretty negative post, even though he's like, yeah, it's so funny, too, because Gary Vee is so sensitive to criticism. Like, he cannot take criticism at all. Like, anyone criticizes him. He's are I'm sorry, but his NFTs are objectively ugly. They are objectively ugly. They, they do ugly. look like my child drew them. Yeah, and, and our child is three months old. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're objectively not, like, aesthetically pleasing in any way. I don't look at these and be like, yeah. I'm going to make millions off of this. And if I was an artist and I saw Gary V making money off so of like his some NFTs, dude, like, like hard fisting a crayon on a paper to draw a fish. Yeah, I would. I would be pissed. I would be like, I spent all my life studying this, and I'm trying so hard to get appreciated for my work, and this dude is just promoting yeah. this drawing. Look at my mean, cat. Yeah, I would be mad. Like, why are you mad at this dude? For saying, hey, your art isn't that great. Like, why not promote other artists yeah. in your NFT, you know? But that that's the funny thing about Gary Vee. He cannot take criticism. All right. Yeah, I think there's enough talks. Yeah. Enough takes for the day. For the cast. For the podcast. Too many people in this room, and when I mean this room, I mean the world, jump into businesses that they know right. nothing about. Not people that <laughs> in this room, I mean the world. Yeah, pretty much the world. <laughs> I mean, in, in a way, the world is just one big room. Yeah, this is true. Gary Vee quote right there. That puts things into perspective. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Gary Vee. In, in a way, the world is just one big shit. Yeah, one big shit, and we're all eating it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of people do eat up Gary Vee's shit, so... If they do, yeah. I'm just kidding. If you like Gary Vee, yeah. no if hate you, towards you. If he's helped you, no hate towards if you. If you like him, go for it. Just don't... Don't just put your whole life into Gary Vee. That people are actually listening to this dude. Like, I, I feel like he has no idea what he's even saying half of the time. No, actually, he makes a video. I don't even know what I'm saying half the... Yeah. No, that... <laughs> that is something he would say, though. Yeah. Start a startup, like, yo... Let's start a music startup because I listen to music. Are you an That's asshole? usually how it starts. <laughs> You're going into the music business, not listening to fucking ASAP Rocky. You I believe in being positive and being <laughs> shutting out negativity. Bro, f <laughs> screw your Are music. You, you're dumb for liking music and wanting to do something with that passion. Passion. You know, so I think about like why was I an F student? Because I promise you, if there was a business school for K through 12, right? Here's my thing, right? If you would have taught me why New Coke failed in 1984 in fifth grade, I would have got an A. Instead, you wanted to teach me how many fucking rings were around Saturn. And I didn't give a fuck about that, right? You should right. care about the rings of Saturn because that's what not puts things into perspective. The Gary. marathon. They're playing the sprint. Look at that right? haircut. They're not worried about That's like lifetime such a value and Silicon retention. Valley haircut. They're worried about short-term goals. Social chameleon. Social He's trying to fit with the environment. Social is not going to excite anybody in this room for what it's going to do to your bottom line in a six-month or 12-month period. It just can't happen. See, social media marketing is like going Beyonce on your customers. You've got to put a fucking ring on it. <laughs> Meanwhile, 99% of the people in here, and I looked at some Twitter. But like, what does that mean? You got you got to put a ring on it. 
on your social media social media is like beyonce you have to put a ring on it so do so what does that mean what is he saying what does it mean to to do it just do it that is true actually this is the clip that helped me start my youtube channel mm -hmm. i decided to put a ring on my channel and that's why i'm yes. here today yep accounts and some of the peeps in this room 90 percent of you more but i'm trying to be nice are treating social media like a one night stand most what? companies are failing in social because What's everybody mean, in social Gary? is acting like a 19 year old dude they're trying to close on the first transaction oh my gosh she's so right and so edgy too and that's why you need to, like me, post a million videos a day. Yeah, stop having last night stands with your social media page. <laughs> what? It's going, right? You know, the problem is Kevin's system fucking annihilates it. He sells Instagram in two years for Billy. And everybody's like, fuck, that's what we need to Like, what the fuck is the matter with people? Like, I don't right? know. Gary. For every one Instagram, there is nine billion fucked. <laughs> For every what? Instagram, there's five million Insta shit. I don't know about you guys, but every time somebody comes up to me and says, well, how's Twitter gonna make money or Facebook? I what? vomit directly in my mouth. Directly in my mouth. <laughs> Asshole, when you have billions of eyeballs, you can monetize. There was no fucking way to make money 15 years ago about loving Millie fucking Vanilli, right? <laughs> but some dude this year, is gonna make $100,000 a year for fucking loving Trinidad James and Two Chains. <laughs> There's a fuckload what? of dumb money chasing it and looking at, to give it to anybody they can. Which is he just doesn't make sense. Like, but he swears and talks no, aggressively. No, he makes sense. He makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but he swears and talks aggressively, so what yeah. he said, he's, he's saying must be important. Gary's, Gary V's word is bond. So, I think, yeah, I think we're good on that. So this is a video that I watched a while ago because I, I, I made a video on Gary V a little over a year ago. I'll link it in the description, although I don't recommend checking it out because I hate watching my old no, content. It. It's super cringy. But um, I came across this video of the comedian Tim Dillon on the um, Joe Rogan podcast. And oh my God, you watched Joe Rogan? <laughs> No, actually, I don't. But I, <laughs> but for some reason, he's interviewed so many subjects you, of my you videos. You look like you watch Joe Rogan. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I fit the character, right? Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, and and what they have to say about Gary Vee is just, I think, pretty amazing. Yeah. So I wanted to react to that. Fired up, and oh my God, look what he said about Megan McCain. And Megan, Megan McCain calls up YouTube. Listen, we're gonna take the view, and we're gonna pull it off of YouTube. If yeah. You don't get rid of that fucking fat fuck that's yeah. impersonating me. That is this. I shit. sometimes I wonder if hey. if like the shadow banning and stuff is because I just made Gary Vaynerchuk mad, and I'm like, I I don't, you know, I made a joke about him. Once again, Gary V does not take criticism hurt. well. Yeah. Do you think he's powerful enough to just go to all no. these companies? Don't take that negativity, like, bro. Maybe. I don't know. Right. I don't think he would do that. I'm but, kidding, yeah. Gary. I love I'm Gary. I love you. I, I'm inspired by you every day. It's all a bit. It's a bit. It's all a joke. I think it's great when you. What happened with him? Well, I, I'll make, I, you know, I have a joke about him. I really, you know, I have a joke. I made a little video about him because some of the things he tweets, he tweets like kindness is delicious. <laughs> Come on. What are we doing? Kindness is best. He puts out in a chocolate. little too much content. Yeah, but That's it's also like all my loser friends think they're going to be the CEOs of companies because this guy <laughs> is telling them there's a business inside of everyone. And there's not. There's just not a business inside of everybody. There's a lot of people that just right. shouldn't. I have to agree be, Like, with, you know, yeah, that should just that, fall in though. line. Yeah. Like yeah. like not everyone can start a podcast. For some reason every millennial Yeah, every every married couple, every friend group thinks like, that they can have something interesting to yeah. say and start a podcast. Like, bro, I'm just going like I don't really want a job after college. I just want to like start podcasting, you know? Us included, the joke is, because what are we doing with the podcast? We have nothing interesting to say at all. Yeah. <laughs> but here we are. Saying Saying non-interesting things. Making videos about Gary V. Yep. In our free time while our baby's sleeping. Just right the hell out. Guarantee right when we go to sleep, this little man is just going to start losing it. Mm-hmm. Start crying. Nice. What? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
fall in line. We don't need everyone thinking that they're going to be the next CEO. Right, but he's got to send the message out there as if everyone can be. That way, the people that are listening and get it, the people that get it, like they're like, okay, he's saying everyone can. That means me. I'm going to go for it, and then they make it. And I appreciate There's- him doing that, but I need to send the message that most people can't. A lot of people. <laughs> so in the same way that he has a message, I have a message. Uh, my message yes, is he's found Gary you're not – antagonist the yeah, anti-v we need, we need an opposite opposing force <laughs> to balance out gary v's gary venus there needs yep. to be an opposite gary v and that is where Tim is Dillon. where are they in the world we don't know we need more opposing forces to counteract the aggressiveness of the gary venus well, they're counteracting is not posting anything if you think about it yeah because gary v posts so much yeah he posts like 20 times a day <laughs> So, so the anti they're balancing by not posting anything yeah, at all. Yep. Yep. They're like, they'll get it. They'll they'll fail anyways. Yeah, it's Barry fine. G. That's the antagonist name. <laughs> Barry Gary, G. Gary V. Gary yeah. V versus Barry G. Very G. Very G. Yeah. That's the <laughs> No, no. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. And he mm. has the But it's also there's no specific guidance with a lot of these guys, not only him, but he'll say things like, You could talk about it. Or you could do it, but you better do both. And it's like, well, what's the it? <laughs> like he tweeted once, goes, yeah, ideas man. are shit. It's all about execution. It's like, execute what? This is Just so true. It. Execute no, it. No, because I'm oh, um, back when I did the Gary V video, I came across a personal trainer guy that was talking about why he doesn't listen to Gary V anymore. And he was like, I, Gary V says, just put your head down and work. Just but like, do what it. are. But what are you working on? It's, what are you doing? Madison, like, it's all this motivation. He, he, it's late. It's laid out perfectly to you. Eat it's, shit, visualize your dead parents, put things into perspective, and put your head down and do it. And then it's like, you. so you have all of that. You're ready to go. You're feeling motivated. You're like, I'm motivated. And then you sit down to work, and it's like, what am I doing? What am I actually doing? Just go through TikTok. But that's what makes a lot of these motivational speakers so frustrating because a lot of what they say, they just say endless stuff that's just like, absolute air it's just like nothingness it's what you make of it yes. it's so vague when you actually boil it down it's just not anything that's tangible um so it just kind of turns into whatever you make of it so if you do something with what they say and it doesn't work out they can say well that wasn't what i was saying it was you misinterpreted it but if you do something and it is successful they can give credit they can yeah. take credit for that be like i gave you the right advice yep what are we going to do? I need help. My kids are sick. Execute what? Can you text me? Do I meet you somewhere? How do we start this? How do we build these businesses? Are we going to do it together? Why do you think he got mad? He got mad? I'm kidding. I don't know if he's mad or not. I wonder if a guy mad. like that has a sense of humor. I'm not. a comedian. Did something you get pulled that you did? My, my, the Gary Vee thing, they took it off YouTube. No. I mean, they took it off Instagram, IG. No. And I bet he walked into a room with a bunch of guys in little hoodies, and he was like, get this fatty and they did and i'm not mad at that because i respect power (laughs) i respect power gary i get it i'm just saying i'm a funny guy me and you will do a podcast gary it's fine (laughs) he's a small i respect him i respect him he's a smart guy right? i just i wish that i had this level of like of dry humor like, yeah. yeah oh my gosh we'll get Smart. there he's i just i wonder how many successful people need that like does warren buffett like look at his phone and go it's time to hustle how i don't know go, warren <laughs> warren so what's true. give me give me that good old gary v yeah like like do and that's what's so funny i don't once again there's no key to success uh, i just bumped my mic there's that's no fine. key to success there's no like ultimate this is what a successful thing person is but a lot of these hustle culture guys look up to figures like elon musk jeff bezos mark zuckerberg people that you really shouldn't look up to but like warren buffett i mean i i I don't know yeah he looks he seems 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 like a pretty chill dude but um but like do you think that like elon musk wakes up and he's like let me check gary v's page to motivate myself for the day yeah. Like, let me make sure, let me make sure, you know, I'm feeling Shit kind of unmotivated. In your mouth. Shit on people. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of unmotivated. I have to, like, I have to warm myself up by checking out Gary Vee, seeing what he's up to, what motivation he's got for me today. Yeah. Like, no, I, I, like, guys like that actually do stuff. They don't sit around and look for ways to get right. motivated. They have a business team. They have, like, people putting things into action. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, 
And so the people that Gary's targeting aren't are people that people like that. They're, it's kids who want to be successful, want to understand how to do it. And unfortunately, Gary Vee isn't actually giving them the guidelines for how to do it because no one knows the key yeah. to anything. We're you all know? just random pieces of a collective puzzle trying to figure out life and having no idea what we're doing, just stumbling through yeah. it. Yeah. And unfortunately, too, that's like usually the first thing people do when they try and bear themselves. When they log onto YouTube or Google and something, it's like how to make a million dollars. It's usually people like Gary V, Ty Lopez, stuff like that, all these like hustle people, and they don't really dive into the. And, and I feel and they, like it's actually melting people's yeah. brains. They look into the views too. Like, oh, Gary V talking about how to make a million dollars got a million views. And like this person yeah. that's talking about how to actually make a million dollars and like make a savings plan only got a thousand, thousand views. So I'm going to watch Gary yeah. V's, obviously. Because Gary's only saying stuff that's shocking. So it's mm-hmm. marketable. If he was actually breaking down how to do something, that would be boring. People wouldn't engage with it. Yeah. He wouldn't get the views. Um. And I get you could say like, oh, well, he's just trying to help motivate people if he can do that a little bit to at least someone. And that's all fine and dandy. But when you're acting like you're this genius, I invested in all these companies, I figured it out, I've got the answers. And then you try and motivate kids, you have to be responsible with what you're Mm -hmm. saying and actually focus on helping them, not just saying something that's going to give you engagement and views. And the last video that we'll react to in this podcast is Casey here on YouTube. She's really awesome. She's um, shouted out some of my videos and that's really cool because I used to watch her all the time before I even started YouTube. But she has this one section in her video titled um, Hustle Culture is an Absolute Nightmare where she talks about Gary Vee. So I thought we would react to that and watch Casey talk about hustle culture. She's got that verification check mark. Hell yeah. Should I speed it down? Uh, yeah, probably. 1.5 speed? That's how I watch my YouTube videos. Damn, burn 1. it through 1.5 club. Uh, I'm like a 2.5. Yeah, comment, comment what speed you watch these videos in. Yeah, comment what speed you watch YouTube videos <laughs> in. I really think you're like, bro, I'd rip both my legs off and arms to be 25. On some real shit. I'd give up everything I have to be 25 just to play again. All of your yeah. limbs? Just like that, nobody asked him to do that and that was the first thing that came out of his mouth. You know what? While you're at it, just chop my head off, okay? Off with my head, I don't need it anymore. I'll throw my brain in my ass. No head, just rising and grinding, okay? Beyond the surface (laughs) level of the community, I recently came across a video that has cemented, at least for me, that we're living in a very dystopian era of hustle culture. But yeah, so that's the section she has on Gary Vee. Okay, I I like it, I like it. Yeah. Gary Vee in a nutshell, I, I like what she used, the the rise and grind culture mm-hmm. of things. Rise and grind culture just sucks, man. Yeah. It really does. You can only rise and grind so much until you can rise and grind no more, you know? This is true. Quote that. I mean, that's why Gary Vee's limbs eventually ended up having to go, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why he's in the metaverse now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Once yeah. Again, we'll get we'll... into metaverse like another podcast. That's a whole yeah. other thing that Once, I don't know anything about. One day about. we'll all be in the metaverse hustling and grinding them on there as well yeah no limbs <laughs> so i wanted to end this podcast by actually going over some valuable information because i feel like i want to have a mix of us being chill reacting to stuff but actually providing some tangible no, info that you can tangible. take from this instead of just like having dreams of gary v talking about shit and um Dead. killing his family i yeah. don't know something like that seems like something you might do just kidding that's mean Um, But yeah, so I thought we would read an actual resource on the dangers of hustle culture, Um, even though is that what Gary Vee stands for anymore? Like he constantly changes what he actually depends what side of the bed he wakes up on. Yeah, it's like some days he's like Like hustle work. I work all the time. Submissive and breedable side. And yeah. And other days it's like, screw everyone. You're going to poop in your coffee and you're going to drink it. In that way, I guess Gary Vee is relatable. (laughs) But um, yeah, so here's some information on hustle culture that you can take with you before we exit for the evening or day or morning, whatever time you're listening. Two o'clock in the morning right now, because that's what time our kid goes to sleep. Do you want to read this? I can't read. Okay, I guess I'll read. Oh, I can, I can read. Okay. 
even though data shows, and this is from headversity.com, but um, I'll provide all the links to the videos we re reacted to, as well as other Gary Vee videos from other content creators and this in the description. So you can just check all that fun stuff out. Even though data shows that working long hours and multitasking lowers productivity and kills creativity, hustle culture exists because it is the search to justify the hustle for the future payoff of extreme success, mm -hmm. which I think is a really good like way to put it that people want people have this idea that if you put your head down and you hustle, you work really hard, it'll pay off. It'll all be worth it. But is it really? No, because it shows that working long hours and multitasking lowers productivity mm -hmm. and kills creativity. You come up with like an actual plan of what you want to do and what you want to accomplish and like give yourself the, a lot of time to do it. Yeah, it's probably going to reach success eventually, you know, but like, I don't know. It seems like people try too hard and try to do things for too long, you know? Yeah. Does that makes sense? Not too long, but like they try and get things done immediately. Like people are so used to like the overnight success, like the yeah, you know, I the, mean, the instant gratification side of things really screws with people's psyche. I mean, like I feel like hustle culture plays into the pressure that we already have in you know our world to try and be successful, make something of ourselves, prove ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, it's right. and it, it just you know I, I feel like it, it's just not a healthy mindset to have at no, the end of the day. Not at all. Um, hustle culture breeds an ongoing toxic environment where if you spend too much time on anything non-work related, you feel guilty, which is so true. When I, um, when I was doing my startup and I felt like that, you know, that family member was telling me to put your head Just down and work for dead five inside years. All the time. It was like the second I was trying to enjoy life, I felt guilty for enjoying life, for relaxing, for taking time to watch a movie. And yeah. I feel like that's so important to just the quality of life that you're living. I, agree. I mean, genuinely, if you look at Gary Vee, not just his ridiculous clips, but just from everything that you've seen so far, does it even look like Gary Vee is living an enjoyable it just life? Looks dead inside yeah you, it's you know he's working so much posting so much yeah it doesn't seem enjoyable at all it, it kind of makes me sad and hey some people have that mentality though you know just like hard set into them yeah. a lot of people just can't live like that yeah there's you know, also you, yeah. you, you shouldn't feel guilty if you can't live like that you know yeah there's a spectrum i think you know where some people are able to fit a ton of stuff into their day and they just mm -hmm. have that natural energy and they're able to work and able to do a ton. And there's some people that can only do one or two things. just get lucky if they have breakfast. Yeah, you know. Um, or remember to have breakfast. Yeah, I get lucky if I am able to change out of my PJs and brush my teeth in a day with, you know, a three-month-old and all of that. And it's just like, you can't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so hustle culture fuels cognitive, cognitive dissonance which is basically, you know, um, kind of contradicting when you have hold two contradicting beliefs at once by overworking and living by the ma mantra of rise and grind. Rise I feel like grind. A, right now with reading and hey, messing up, my... I feel like a kid who's in a classroom, like trying to read. And I used to get so much mm -hmm. social anxiety. Same. You can end up contradicting your actual goals and losing sight of your why. When you become so addicted to the hustle and constantly working, Sometimes you can forget what you're even working towards, yeah, which what, like that totally makes sense. That's what my mm -hmm. alarm says. 5.30 in the morning, rise and grind. So why does hustle culture exist? Rooted in behavioral psychology, hustle culture uses a specific reinforcement schedule from operant conditioning, by, which is super interesting to me that there's actually a psychological reason to why people get almost addicted to rise hustle culture. <laughs> rise and grindy yeah. a little too rise and grindy yeah it's a little too rise and grindy for me man <laughs> but i'm trying to wake up at five o'clock in the morning my response to everything if anyone tries to hustle culture me I'm it's just a little rise like, and grindy it's a little too rise and grindy by rewarding individuals after a random number of times hustle culture uses a variable ratio schedule the strongest of all reinforcement schedules the same used in lottery games hustlers become dependent Blah, blah, blah. hustlers become dependent on these unpredictable rewards of success so it basically means like you, you're, you're you don't hustling, want to miss out yeah. or yeah like you're hustling and you're hustling and then randomly one of your hustles 
results in success and then you're like oh that worked and so you want to keep going keep doing yeah. it it's like gambling if i did that for one thing i can do it for 20 others and yeah have 20 million dollars exactly so it's like gambling when you like you gamble and you gamble and then one of it takes off and you have you mm -hmm. know success then you want to keep doing it There's it's addictive in a sense hustlers become dependent on these unpredictable rewards of success thus resulting in a rush that pushes you to hang on to until the next win over and over and over What's the impact of this? By forcing workers to be in a go hard or go home mindset, hustle culture puts the body in a state of fight or flight. This constant stress releases the stress hormone cortisol, which you look at Gary Vee, he looks like he's, he looks constantly, like he's been stressed. constantly fighting for his life. Yeah. In higher <laughs> he's amounts. Been fighting not to fail. Yeah. In higher amounts and for more prolonged periods. To normalize these elevated cortisol levels, the body must enter a state of rest. But what if hustle culture doesn't allow time for rest? Then burnout is inevitable. This continuous stress can be harmful to both your mental health and physical well-being. Let that be a learning lesson to you folks. Prolonged elevated cortisol levels are associated with various detrimental effects, including anxiety, depression, heart disease, memory impairments, and more. What? So what do you need to do if you want to unplug from this, the stress of hustle culture and all? Just stop being so rise and grindy. Instead of, instead of meditating, just sit, just in, sit a in a shower, shower on your private imagine, jet <laughs> <laughs> and imagine your family being shot. So what to do if you're stuck in hustle culture, which I thought this was helpful to kind of end out this video. <laughs> Just a stop. If you are someone who, <laughs> while um, watching this, realize that you have kind of gotten sucked into hustle culture. Oh my gosh, why at the end of this podcast can I not talk anymore? Um, so if you're stuck in hustle culture, the first step is to start with awareness. By becoming aware, if you are in the cycle of hustle culture, you possess the foundation for change and progression. Are you feeling exhausted and depleted? Have no time in your life besides work. You may be a rising, a little too rising grindy. A little too rising grindy. Two, acknowledge what's important to you. Clarify your goals and write them down. Take a moment to think. Are your intentions honoring your why? Three, define what your ideal day looks like. With your true priorities established, Sleep. plan yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> with your plan out how you can manage and achieve them while taking care of your well-being. Four, give your mind time to wander. By taking mindful micro breaks throughout your workday, you'll feel more balanced and therefore See, protect yourself from experiencing that, burnout. That's kind of hard though, because like my micro ba breaks turn into macro breaks, and that I start. Is <laughs> I start sleeping like 12 hours a day. It's like those naps where you're like, I'm just going to take a 10, 15 time minute nap. Time and break. Look at my timer. See, hours. look at my timer. I'm, I'm good to go. I wake yeah. up, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. My mom used to always tell me something and it's now like my life mantra. If I was sick and I had to like take a day off from school, she'd be like, your body must have needed that. Your body needed that. Or my like body's been I, needing that for a while. <laughs> if, I took, if I took a nap and it ended up extending longer, she's like, your body must have needed that. And now I'll tell myself that all the time. My body needs some you rest. You don't let me do that. <laughs> Yeah, I do. We watch TV all the time. Are you kidding me? But the second I fall asleep, it's just, we go. Because <laughs> you're not allowed to sleep when I'm not sleeping. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Five, reward you yourself it. now, not later. Hustle culture, which I think is super important. Oh, yeah. That actually makes sense. Hustle culture is built. Thank you, cats. <laughs> Hustle culture is built on the mantra that your hard work will someday pay off. Break this cycle by credit by creating boundaries in your schedule, which is so important. Actually creating boundaries in your own personal life and not pushing yourself Agreed. farther than, than you know you'll be able to go. And reward yourself with projects that will build your resilience and present and prevent burnout. Work hard, rest hard. Rather than treating self-care as a commodity that must be earned, lead with <gasps> self-love and compassion. Even take a mental health day when you need it. Oh, yeah. And if you're feeling stressed, try out these quick trips, which... We're, we're trips gonna, or tips? Yes. Trips. That, trips in your yep. private... The end. Pri in your, <laughs> private, your jet, private jet. <laughs> in your own private shower. <laughs> yep. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a big flex right there, though. That was a very subtle flex that he put yeah. in there. Just, yep. like, just like in his like little uh, TikTok, he's... Um, He's like showing like, oh, I have three person or I have three lives. And like in a second life is like a little glip of him like in the front stands of like a basketball game, like 
pointing yeah. at LeBron James. Like, good on you, Gary. I mean, he's definitely done a lot. Yeah. Um, I ha- I respect the energy. I respect the hustle, but I just don't respect how he's kind of telling people that this is the way to live. He's telling yeah. kids that he has the answers and this is the only answer. And then he seems to not even know yeah. his own answers or his own mantras. Gary, Gary, if you ever if you ever end up watching this, which low chance that you will, just like have like a disclaimer or something, bro. Yeah, like, literally. Like like say a disclaimer and have one written on your yeah. videos. Like like hey, all of this stuff. Because as someone going who claims success. to know the power of social media, mm-hmm. as someone who claims to understand the he power knows how of social media, it is too. he seems to not be really treating his words with that weight with that much care yeah yeah and so that's our video on gary v our podcast on very gary v first one back hopefully many more yeah. to come uh let me know if you enjoy this more chill format yeah. and we'll yeah. do some more videos like this and also let us know who you want us to react to next yep. it's super weird for me to just react in a chill format to someone as i'm used to like pages and pages of research and scripted out content but it's actually fun to kind of do this and hopefully it's fun for you guys to see our personality come through a little bit more maybe in content and um and yeah. uh yeah if you Thank made you it this guys. far comment comment your um your playback speed oh yeah of youtube videos true. um and comment like i don't know rising grindy yeah <laughs> yeah if you if you're watching on like spotify <laughs> apple podcast stuff like that i don't know how you would do that but just 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 send just, it to the universe and we'll receive it yeah. <laughs> anyways it's a thank mental you. note thanks um, for the love and support yeah and we take constructive we criticism it. well too so mm-hmm. any improves we'll block it. it out it's just all negative yep yep and send uh, all the negatives shit, yeah. shit on us and i don't know when this will end up getting posted but uh, hopefully we'll come up with another additional podcast before the holidays. Yeah. And um, yeah, happy holidays. We'll see you guys too. In the next one. Bye. Bye.